I witnessed my husband's affair. I believe such experiences are rare. Most people confront their husbands after finding evidence of infidelity on their smartphones, but I happened to see it with my own eyes. Never did I imagine that it would be in such a place witnessed by so many people. Sure, I had felt suspicious about the relationship for a while, but I never expected to see my husband doing that in such a place. I'm Sophia, a full-time homemaker with a six-year-old son. On the day I witnessed the affair, my husband was off work and we planned to go out as a family, but when I woke up, my husband was already gone. There was a message on my smartphone from my husband saying, My sister has a high fever of 39 degrees, so I'm going to take care of her. It seems that no one is at home today. I'll be back in the evening. I let out a big sigh. I had told our son that we were going to the amusement park today, and he had been looking forward to it since the day before. I was told that my husband was recently put in charge of a major project, and he hadn't been able to take a break for the past six months. So this break was a rare chance for some family time, but he ended up going to take care of his sick sister. His sister is supposed to be engaged, so it should be fine to leave it to him. Anyway, my husband is a sister complex. The reason why I started dating him was because he said, You're wonderful because you're like my sister. Which made me feel uneasy. Well, his sister was very beautiful and kind when I met her for the pre-wedding greeting, and I guess that resembling her is the highest compliment from my husband. But I couldn't help but feel creeped out. My husband used to say, I want a boy and a girl, and frequently asked for sex, but since our son was born, the frequency has significantly decreased. Now it's almost non-existent. We're still young, and my husband used to enjoy sex, so I can't help but suspect that he's doing with other women or that he's cheating. Well, if he just betrayed me, I could still forgive him. It's infuriating though, but the problem is that he disappears from morning every day on his days off, like today. On his days off, he could at least play with the kid once in a while, couldn't he? Our child is such a daddy's boy that he cries when he realizes his father is not around. My husband is too indifferent towards our child. He doesn't even prepare a birthday present, and he doesn't participate in school events, no matter how free he is. Even when he comes home early occasionally, he just holds up in his room and plays video games all the time. He hardly ever faces our son. Our son, who used to be a daddy's boy, will probably start to see his father as a stranger if this continues. Oh, and the part about my husband being busy because he was put in charge of a major project was a lie. I mean, he hardly ever comes home, so I once asked a former classmate who works at the same company as my husband, is my husband really that busy? My classmate laughed and told me, No way, your husband is actually a window side employee, and he always looks free because he has no work. He leaves works on time every day. I thought, I knew it. After all, despite supposedly being put in charge of a major project, his salary is only in the 200,000 yen range, and he never looked tired from working overtime. In fact, he looked rather glossy. This is also a factor that makes me suspect his infidelity. Despite harboring a lot of dissatisfaction, I finished preparing breakfast. I check the time and tilt my head. This is strange. Usually, he wakes up by 7 o'clock even if I don't wake him, but it's already past that time. At this rate, he will miss the bus to the nursery school, so I hurriedly went to wake up my son. In the room, my son was still sleeping, and when I tried to wake him up saying, It's morning, wake up! Instead of a response, I heard a groan of pain. As I worried, I reached out to my son's painful face and put my hand on his forehead. It was very hot. I called my son's name and lightly shook his shoulder. Barely opening his eyes, my son said, Mom, it hurts. I was almost panicked for a moment. Around this time, there was an outbreak of that illness at the daycare center, and I wondered if my son had caught it too. I had heard that there were cases where people died from it, so I seriously thought my son might not make it. In desperation, I called my husband, but he didn't answer at all. With no time to wait for a reply to an email, I decided to call my mother and ask for first aid advice. My mother is a nurse, so I thought it would be best to ask an expert. Under my mother's precise instructions, I quickly prepared a cold compress and measured my son's temperature. It was over 39 degrees Celsius. I called an ambulance and made sure my son to drink a lot of fluids while waiting for it to arrive. According to my mother, there was also a possibility of heat stroke. Considering the risk of infection, I wasn't allowed to accompany him in the ambulance, so I called a taxi and headed to the hospital where he would be taken. In the meantime, I kept calling my husband, even though I knew it was futile. As expected, it was pointless. With no other choice, I left a message online. I figured he would come as soon as he noticed, assuming he was still responsible enough to do so while out in his car. I arrived at the hospital and prayed as I waited in the corridor outside the emergency room for my son's treatment to finish. My father had once been taken into the emergency room just like this and he never came out. Just as I was imagining the worst, thinking, 
What if my son doesn't come out either? My mother, who had rushed to the hospital, comforted me. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And then, an hour later, my son miraculously survived. But he was told that he should be hospitalized for at least a week, so he was taken straight to a ward. In the end, my husband didn't come home that day. The next day, I went home to get my son's change of clothes, and I decided to visit him in the hospital with some fruit for him to eat. I also planned to say hello to the doctor who had taken care of us the day before, so I passed by the emergency room. Suddenly, the area became hectic. I thought, maybe someone was brought in, so I decided to postpone saying hello to the doctor so as not to be in the way. Just as I thought I was about to go to my son's ward, I saw a man and a woman being carried on a stretcher. They were barely covered with a thin blanket, almost as if they were naked. It seems like they were still joined together. It must be one of those situations where the man's thing can't come out during the act. I've never experienced it, but it must be quite troublesome. But being carried in this state must be embarrassing. As I was thinking this and about to pass by, I made eye contact with the man. Under normal circumstances, it would be an awkward situation, but for me, it was different. I was stunned, because the man was my husband. What? why are you here like this? I exclaimed in surprise. No, well, I caught my sister's cold, so, um... My husband was at loss for words. At that moment, I was also confused. My son had just been taken here yesterday, and now my husband too? What are the odds of that happening? And why was my husband being carried in naked? And who is the woman with him? All sorts of thoughts were whirling around in my head. In the midst of all this, I accidentally make eye contact with the woman who is interwined with my husband. Even in my state of confusion, I can tell. This woman is my husband's mistress. As I glared at her, I realized that her face was very familiar. What? Why is Sophia here? Hearing her voice, I finally remembered. Yes, that woman was Amelia, my husband's sister. I felt this moment is incredibly long. I suspected my husband was lying about taking care of his sister and meeting a woman instead, but I never expected this. Even if he was coming to visit our son, he should not have come while still joined with the woman. But the woman is his real sister? There are limits to how much one can mess around, because they were taken away on a stretcher. All I could do was hold back my urge to lunge at them and wait. They couldn't escape anyway, so I decided to confront them later. With that thought in mind, I headed to visit my son, still feeling sick deep down. I spent some time in my son's room trying to sort out my feelings. When I casually checked my phone, I saw a ton of messages from my husband online. Looking at the content, it was all just him trying to cover up his actions. He didn't even mention our son's hospitalization. I decided to keep ignoring him and waited another hour. Then the doctor who had been in charge of my son the day before appeared. The doctor smiled at me and said, Your son is doing very well. He might be able to be discharged earlier than expected. His fever had come down and his condition seemed to have completely stabilized. Initially, I was worried about an infectious disease, but it seems he had heat stroke in addition to the cold. You made sure he drank a lot of water, didn't you? That was the right move. You're a smart mother and your son must be happy. He even praised me that much. If anything, it's thanks to my mother. Maybe I'll give her some high quality meat next time. I deeply bowed to the kind doctor and expressed my gratitude, but it wasn't hard to imagine that I was about to face quite a storm. I had just been relieved about my son's condition, but I was beginning to boil inside. Mommy's face is scary. I had frightened my son. I quickly put on a smile and told my son, I'll be right back before stepping outside the hospital and calling my husband, who had left more than a hundred unanswered calls. The moment my husband answered the phone, he started, It's not what you think. There's a reason. And he started making excuses. He's got the order wrong. Shouldn't he first be worried about her son? Well, there's no way a man who was so engrossed in his act with his own sister, completely disregarding her son, would worry about him. With a husband like this, I was worried about my son's future. As I didn't think my husband's personality could improve, I decided to divorce him. I think life will be tough, but for my son's sake, I can endure it, right? I told him, You were busy with that, even when our son was suffering, right? You've always been doing that whenever you had the time, haven't you? And with your own sister, it's really disgusting. My husband was at loss for words. I continued, Oh, and by the way, I've already reported this to your parents. I won't tell your company. It would be a problem if you can't pay alimony and child support. So goodbye, I said to my husband, expressing my finality. Three days later, my son's health recovered faster than expected, so after completing the discharge procedures, we returned home together for the first time in a long time. Of course my husband wasn't there, 
After the commotion, my husband showed up to apologize directly, but I showed the divorce papers already signed in his face. My husband begged, "It was my first time. Forgive me for one mistake. You're all I have." But I coldly told him, "So you're still lying at this point? I already know everything. Your sister confessed everything." Yes, I anticipated that my husband wouldn't easily agree to a divorce, so to silence him, I first approached his sister, the person involved. Sister-in-law, I heard you're going to have a wedding ceremony with your boyfriend soon. Congrats! Ah,、uh, thank you. I was thinking of sending a congratulatory message, and a good idea came to mind. Want to know what it is? No, no, no way! You're not planning to talk about this, are you? Yes, because I want everyone to know. They'll understand what kind of person you are at once if I tell them this. I smiled slyly. Please, anything, okay, but not that. If you do that, my life will be over. I pretended to think for a moment and then continued with a smile. Hmm, can't be helped. Then let's do this. I'll keep quiet about this matter if you tell me in detail how many times you did it with my husband. Then I promise to keep quiet. Of course, your younger brother will feel betrayed. But what will you do? Then, without hesitation, my sister-in-law confessed everything, begging, "I'll tell you everything. Just please don't tell him." When I told my husband this, he fainted from the shock of being betrayed by the sister he loved more than anyone else. After waking up, my husband signed the divorce papers and left the house dejectedly. From then on, through my lawyer, I demanded a divorce custody of our son, alimony, and child support from him. He haggled over the amount, but when I whispered in his ear, "Would you like me to spill the beans to your company?" he said, "All right, I will pay the amount you said," and left the lawyer's office. Later, for some reason, the company found out about what happened, and my husband was summoned and severely reprimanded. A month later, he was fired from the company, and now he works at a food factory, putting strawberries on cakes to pay the alimony and child support. Somehow, the factory also knows about what he did, and he seems to be constantly gossiped about by young girls, making him uncomfortable. As for my husband and sister, despite the fact that I didn't expose her, everything came out, and she was dumped by her fiance. It seems that the boyfriend, like me, suspected infidelity and had hired a private investigator to conduct the surveillance. She was demanded a large sum of money as compensation for breaking off the engagement, and now she seems to be working at a nightclub. Also, the other day, I was given a photo of them in the act by her ex-boyfriend, saying, "Use it if something happens." I wondered what kind of nerve he had to give such a thing to a woman like me, but I decided to keep it in my dresser. I'll gratefully use it as a precaution in case I get a message from my ex-husband or something happens. I moved back to my parents' home to start fresh, and I'm working hard to raise my son with their help. Since my parents lived far away, they had been longing to see their grandson and told me they would help as much as they could. I don't want to overburden them, so I guess I'll only ask for their help when I need it. By the way, my son, as if his high fever at the time was a lie, has been healthy ever since, and now, three years later. He is always recognized for perfect attendance. He seems to have completely forgotten about his real father and is enjoying his life every day. This is what makes me happiest. Oh, by the way, I have a new family member. It's a white cat named Snow who is comfortably sleeping on my lap. It was when I said my final goodbye to Snow, who often came to play in my yard before I moved. Just as usual, it climbed onto my lap and then became as still as a stone Buddha. I was also lonely to leave Snow behind, so I decided to bring it home with me. Now Snow is a good friend to my parents and my family home, and it has become just as important to me as my son. From now on, I want to warmly watch my son's growth along with my parents and Snow. I thought about this while stroking Snow on the porch.